having a conversation with uh, Dr. John Whitcomb, who I met maybe five or six years ago and struck my curiosity into living more optimally. And I really appreciate him. He's a board certified internal medicine doctor and founder of Brookfield Longevity. And I'm never quite sure how to introduce folks like you. Are you a functional medical doctor? Are you an integrative medical doctor? What well, are you? Yes, to all of the above. I'm a board certified internist. Internist, yeah. But I've decided that there is a whole world of prevention and that actually keeping people at optimal functioning prevents disease and extends health span. So the real goal is how do we, instead of treating disease and diagnosing and treating illness, and most of us are lazy and we don't go to see a doctor if we don't have to, which is usually a pretty good strategy. But, <laughs> by default. By default. But in fact, we now know that we can navigate a longer health span. I want you to have a brain span that's 100. I want you to have yeah a health span that's 95 and that you have a very short end of your life. Yeah. Now the Grim Reaper gets all of us. Well, that's how do we optimize how the body functions? So yeah. functional medicine comes from that. It's really what internal medicine should be in mm -hmm. my humble opinion. Humble opinion. I, and I agree wholeheartedly. So I thought we would have a conversation about uh, and you can give more detail to it. We can talk about vitamin D. We've talked about it before. Um, I think it's worth bringing up again because in, in my naive understanding of the function of vitamin D, um, it's very inexpensive, you know, and it really, really is a great foundational piece to help boost your immune system. And what you've taught me and what I, I do understand is that when we talk about longevity, we're really just talking about your immune system. We're just talking about if you got a, a robust immune system, you're going to age well or a lot better. Well, we're an integrated body and you can't have a dysfunctional immune system and live long. <laughs> Fair enough. Right. Simply stated. So we're, we're here in Wisconsin. Um, we're recording this in the beginning of February. Um, I know that your vitamin D levels are really good. I know that mine are very good, but the most of the population in the Midwest has got well, low vitamin D levels. The data shows, there's published research, the data shows that Caucasians living in Wisconsin who are not taking vitamin D will get a blood level of about 10 to 15 in the winter, mm. nanograms, and they'll hit about 45 in the summer. But skin type three is Central Europeans, German, Polish, English, French. Skin type two are the freckled, red-haired, Irish, Scots, uh, you know, Swedes. Skin type one are those literally virtually white hair folks in Northern Russia, Northern Finland. They, they get sunburned if, in five minutes of sun. Right. Skin type three will get some sun tan. Skin type four are Italians, Spanish, Spaniards, Moroccans, Middle Easterners. Skin type five are Indians uh, from in, you know, or Central India, yep. uh, Chinese. Skin type six are the black Africans. Mm -hmm. We have many skin type sixes in Milwaukee. Right. Their blood level will be, I have measured a thousand on my own. Their blood level will be in the winter four, and in the summer, 12. Wow. Now we know one thing about vitamin D is it's not a vitamin, it's a hormone. Right. And it is a hormone dependent on a switch. And the switch is blood level of D. When your blood level of, if I take tuberculosis and put it in Petri dishes with your white cells, I can show that your white cells cannot kill tuberculosis until your blood level of D hits 32. Mm -hmm. And precisely at 32, you start making a protein called, or it's your natural antibiotic called cathelicidin. Mm -hmm. So this is how D is carrying out its fundamental role. And that is, it is your stem cell turn on hormone. Every organ needs stem cells in it. And without vitamin D, 
you won't activate your stem cells. And you can see that even in cardiology, you can see a study from Great Britain that found four babies who were in congestive heart failure at birth. Big, huge hearts in their chest. They were on all sorts of meds, oxygen at home. And then somebody said, let's check their D level. And they all had D levels of zero. And their mothers were all women of color who were recent immigrants who hadn't been in the healthcare system and hadn't taken prenatals and had no vitamin D and had tend to be of alternative religions that required them to be covered and didn't sure. live in a home that had a courtyard where they could be exposed to sunlight. Right. They were living on a flat. So the yeah. vitamin D levels are zero. Those four babies completely recovered their heart. The congestive heart failure went away when they got vitamin D. Yeah. Come to Milwaukee and you can find a hundred young African-American, young men and young women with horrible congestive cardiomyopathy in huge hearts and every one of their vitamin D levels will be in the 10 range, less. I've measured five or six of them while I was in the ER and I gave each of them 100,000 units and said, this is, you can do this to save your life. And then I left Aurora because I wasn't there anymore. So it, it, vitamin D is your stem cell hormone. So it helps your immune system. It helps your heart. It helps your brain. It helps your muscles. All your, any listener who wants can Google and look up athletic performance and vitamin D. And if you want to have fun with it, you can look up the Blackhawks, win the Stanley Cup, vitamin D. First team in history to give every one of their players vitamin D. And that little edge turned into a couple more goals, gave them the Stanley Cup. Okay, if you were a coach and you were a team, I would say every single last player has to be on vitamin D. Well, that's, it's a steroid hormone. Now we don't allow you to be on other steroid hormones. Vitamin D is based, nature is frugal. If it finds something that works and works as a hormone, it'll say, let's take that steroid molecule. And if sunlight hits it at just the right spot, it'll open up one and turn into vitamin D. And then your liver does something and your kidney does something, but then you've got this hormone that we make and manufacture in the summer. And we then don't have it in the winter. The sun's angle today is 30 degrees. As long as we're below 45, there's enough atmosphere that UVB rays don't get to you. So until we get to April 1st, living in Wisconsin, we don't get any vitamin D. Once we get to October 1st, we're, we have some in our tank that allows us to make it through the winter, but it gradually then degrades. But every six weeks, it drops by half. Every time I have a conversation like this with you or somebody similar to you, there is not a coincidence that we have a cold and flu season that crushes us this time of year. Is there not a coincidence that this, the COVID virus, there's other factors, but this COVID virus is harming and having a bigger effect on people of color than it is on you know, Caucasians, and, and there's other complexities to, you know, social economic, to um, uh, living closer together, all that, but. I believe, I believe that's a slam dunk. And in, <laughs> fact, in fact, in in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, I personally led an initiative at Sinai Hospital to give every employee, when the last pandemic happened with influenza, yep. we give every employee a bottle of free vitamin D cost us $10,000. And then we measured our absenteeism compared to the other 14 hospitals in Aurora Healthcare. Yeah. And over the course of three months, our hospital had absenteeism go down and the other 13 hospitals went up. Okay, so this is such a slam dunk. What does it take? Let's just take Milwaukee. I don't need to change the world, but how do we change our community to go, Folks, you need to, and it's cheap. Everybody can afford vitamin D. It would be cheaper <laughs> to give everybody vitamin D than be paying for one day of COVID in the hospital for one patient. You Agreed. could do the whole city with vitamin D. It's that cheap. I mean, it's and, so- and to, be, 
to be clear, I, I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but you, you're not saying, you know, vitamin D is not going to solve COVID, but it's the found, it's a piece of the foundation to give well, you me, a fighting chance. Let me give you another teaser. <laughs> vitamin D and vitamin K2 are clearly partners for bone health. Yes. Okay. Go to Japan and look at the district around Fukushima which is where the power plant, you know, blew up and all that stuff and all yeah. that. Okay. 16 million people. That happens to be the district that eats the most natto. And natto is fermented soybeans, the highest food source of, of K2. I knew you've tried, I know you've tried it and you're not a fan. <laughs> right. So what's happened, guess how many deaths they've had in that district of 16 million people. 16 million people how many deaths have they had from COVID so far? One. Wisconsin's had 5,000 and we only have 6 million. So if you imagine, so there's something spooky about vitamin D and K2 that work together in our immune system that hasn't been explored or hasn't been understood yet. But I believe that that catapults your immune system even higher. So 